Hi everyone, Engineer Liu here. So, uh, first things first, uh, today is my birthday, so happy birthday to me, yay! And on this video, uh, we'll be doing a tutorial on how to build a clone of Wireshark in Go, like a much more simpler, of course, with not all the functionalities from Wireshark, but with the let's say enough functionalities that you do have like a real packet sniffer that you can process that data. For those who don't know what a packet sniffer is, it basically uh, one of the most famous packet sniffers over there uh, with large number of features is Wireshark Network Analyzer. So basically you have to select your network interface here. I have many like that, even one running Docker. So usually uh, the package that you want to capture is called ATH0, ATH for Ethernet. So that would be the case if you're connected via uh, wire, uh, Ethernet cable, but if not, probably it will be something different. Uh, here, if not mistaken, it's WP. Uh, let me check. Um, you, can, you can check all real interfaces with ifconfig and let's see here epnp ones so uh, all the packets received and transmitted so 600 megabytes 50 and let's see the other one um no it's not docker <clears throat> i've seen another wp ah these are the wireless ones uh yeah this is wi-fi so it's a wi-fi uh, extension my wi-fi interface so let's try here in wi-fi because i connected via wi-fi you're gonna start start uh capturing packages and yeah that was what i'm going to say that in order to cap backtracks you have to use something called proto buffers and to use uh, actually not proto buffers but proto protocols proto buffers is related to something else but you have to use something like proto uh, protocols for uh, making up your own uh, say a template for the udp tcp rp package that you're going to capture. So for that, uh, for security reasons, uh, your your operational system limits that. So yeah, we have to run that with uh, sudo uh, fire shark. And now I'm gonna tap my password. I'm gonna pass the video because there are several AI who can transcript my password like that. So. Keep in mind the next time you'll be doing uh, recording videos. Okay, so now I'm running Wireshark with sudo. So I got the administrative privileges, high privileges. And I'm gonna start listening on this error, get information by socket, permission denial. That's weird. So let's try with np one so Yeah, I don't think that's something. Let me try entering a website. No internet. Yeah, that's probably because my Wi Fi is not turned on. Yeah, I'm a genius. Yeah, I should have turned my Wi Fi on. And now it will work. Uh, but I think I have to go back to yeah to the Wi-Fi uh, device here WLP2SO so and now it's working. Let me try uh, show you something. Uh, I will try to get to uh, HTTP instead of HTTPS for the sites. 
a website example of console, you can see the payload here. And yeah, I think I can pause it now. So let's check in TCP, mostly TCP, example.com. And uh, what is this? Yeah, so on example.com, I trying to look for data, but it's probably compressed with GZ or something like that. Yeah. TCP, HTTP, yeah, here it is. So this is the header of the HTTP request. Here it says HTTP 1.0, 1.1.0. Uh, 200 so it's okay for a think internet protocol hypertext yeah it has responded with a 200 okay uh, yeah as I, as I suspected the encoding is gzip so I have to decode for gzip age cache control date e tag expire so yeah so this is basically the kind of information we will be having from a packet sniffer written in Go. And this is basically what Wireshark does, but of course it's, it will be much more robust and with much more features than what they're going to build. So I'm going to close Wireshark now. I know I will not save this. And uh, yeah, I believe that interface was... Um, and no, it was a wireless interface. Yeah, that's what we're going to use. Okay, so if the package that we're going to use uh, is called a Go packet, and also we're going to use PCAP. Uh, so let's go one at a time. Uh, so First things first, create your main.go file, package main, front main, remote drill. And here's where the magic happens. So I'm gonna open a terminal over here. I'm gonna type go get and then the GitHub. Uh, where is it? Yes. So that's what we need. Oops. So go get. No, that's. Let's complain over here. Go install. Oh, of course, we have to create a module for it. So go mod init uh, packet sniffer, go mod tidy, and then we run go get. <clears throat> yeah, so I think we need. I think we need another package which is called layers from go packet. And uh, pcap. What oh, then? more tidy and think we're good to go so I'm gonna go to the documentation page for pcap so 
yeah, there's also stuff here reading pcap files, reading live packets, inactive handles, pcap timeouts, pcap file writing, those for Windows Auto. So we're Linux, so we're good to go. Uh, reading pcap files, no, that's not what we want. We want to create our own and then read live packets. That's exactly what we want. So the following code here can be used to read data in, from a live device in case Ethernet O, ETH O, you were to open live only supports microsecond resolution. Okay, no problem. So let's copy this code here and see what we can do with it. Okay. And I think we need Go more tidy. Yeah. So, okay, I'm gonna get rid of this else here. I don't like else at all. Like, panic will have an early return here. So, basically, uh, we create a handle and uh, with pcap.open live. So, Open Live opens the device and returns a handle. It takes an argument the name of the device, which we get from ifconfig or iwconfig in case of wireless device. Maximum size to read from each packet, which is uh, in this in 32 years net length. Uh, whether to put the interface in promiscuous mode and the timeout. Warning, this function supports only microsecond timestamps. Okay, so uh, before we go further, it's important to highlight that uh, this is, might be considered a hostile activity, so only do that on uh, devices that you are authorized to do. In this case, I'm doing my own device, so there are no third parties involved and uh, yeah, because it may subject you to legal, uh, you can be sued and be under a legal procedure and so on. So, yeah, always keep that in mind when playing with this stuff. So, my device, if I'm not mistaken, is this one over here. I'm going to replace here. And uh, yeah, the snaps link, this is, I think I will leave this, this like the default. And the Boolean promiscuous mode, I think we need is um, promiscuous mode regarding, otherwise we won't be able to capture the package. And the other parameter is uh, timeout, timeout, time dot duration. And block forever causes it to block forever waiting for the packets when passing to set an open line while returning coming back to use them relatively quick quickly. So it's a time duration of yeah, minus. Yeah. And uh, so we already checked if the error is not equal. I actually don't like that kind of syntax, like to do the like, if error is not equal to new, then we simply panic. We panic and display the error. And now uh, it's setting up some filters here. There's some extra parentheses here. Uh, TCP and port 80, we're going to set the filter on to TCP, so error, then I'm going to do it like this, let's complain here, no new for out. Okay. so error is not equal to new, blah, 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 blah. so set PP, PPF, PPF filter, so compiles and sets the BPF filter for the PCAP handle. So yeah, I think it's like uh, Wireshark, you have that sort of extensions. 
uh, extensions not exactly like uh, filters like uh, when you're querying a database of sorts and you can filter the table for the kind of uh, protocol you want or port and so on. So we're going to be filtered by TCP and uh, yeah, packet source. Then we create go packet dot new packet source from the handle we created on this device and handle dot link type. So link type returns pcap data underscore data link as the link type. Yeah, I think that's very much it that we want. Uh, our filter. Regarding TCP, there's uh, so TCP. We are okay. So packet go packet dot new packet layers layer type Ethernet. So here's to decode the packet. Now for packets, we are iterating range packet source dot packets, and we need to write this function here. So let's call it a func. Oops, func handle packets, and it takes an argument a go packets packet go packet dot packet. And now we have to do some stuff with this packet. I think for now we just like print it. Oops. Print line uh, packet. And we're good to go to do some testing. Uh, since for this, for this we need to be running as root, we're gonna we'll be needing to compile this program and then run it as root because we can do simply go a sudo go run main that code that won't work. So we need to compile first before build. Now that we have the binary here, it's packet sniffed and we can run uh, sudo. Actually, yeah, that's better. And we go with uh, sudo packet sniffer. Then I'm gonna enter my password, I'm gonna pause the video again, and I enter my password. And we already have some packets here. We'll see. Let me try uh, going to example domain.com again so let me refresh this over here without HTTPS and uh, yeah I'm gonna pause this with uh, control C and let's see if we have TCP you can see already that this needs some processing because the data seems like uh, the organized not well tabulated and so ideally that would be like inserted into a a SQL database so you can pre-process later and uh, get the statistics and aggregates aggregates that you want so let me try to find here Let's see. I think I'm gonna run this and then uh, the uh, lock okay and now I'm gonna access a couple of times here and now we're gonna look at the logs. Okay, let me hide this. So here we have several packets. Uh, all of them are HTTP and I think the payload is not being displayed. 
Nevertheless, we got already a backend sniffer working, but uh, as you can see, uh, the data is not that clear. So if you want to display, the, let's say the payload, here it simply say like payload 29 bytes, payload 25 bytes. So here we got the payload. I think if we want to display the payload, we have to do something like uh, packet dot uh, data, I guess. Data returns. Function for says that this is specific to the packet. The data returns a set of bytes. Yeah, we don't want the bytes, so we want to convert it to string. And yeah, I think. And also, it'd be interesting if we could have some other information. So I think we can first check that. Uh, we have the we are in the TCP layer, so it will be something like TCP layer equals to I think will be the packet dot layer and the layer must be TCP no I think it is uh, it has something like layers dot TCP, yeah, TCP. I think that's what we want here. Layers dot TCP. Uh, no, I, yeah, layer type. That's what we want. Layer type. Layer type TCP. Okay, so this will return a go packet dot layer. So if TCP layer is not equal to new, that means we got actually a TCP. Um, we got a TCP package, and then we can uh, do some stuff uh, with it. Uh, let's see. We should extract like uh, layers from the TCP package. So for that, we can do something um, with this TCP layer. If you can see here, the type uh, go to type definition. So layer type, layer contents, layer payloads, layers. I think we can do something along. Uh, we can extract layers TCP here. So let me try something. So TCP equals to, it will be TCP layer dot we can get the layer type layer payload layer contents yeah let's do that that so let's um uh, layer type and then TCP layer that is the other attribute that we want TCP layer uh, and payload payload okay let's say uh, layer type and then uh, we get 
get contents. Oops. And then we got the payload. Yeah, I think we're good to go here. So this is layer type. This is bytes. Layer type, what we got here. Contains the code string. I think we can print line. layer type and then layer type. And then we print contents. Uh, what's this here? Ah, oh, yeah, we have to convert from bytes to string. And finally, print payload. I think it's bytes, yeah, it's bytes as well, so slice of bytes. And we convert it to, okay. So I think we're good to test it now. Uh, I'm going to go build dot. So we got a packet sniffer and then sudo packet sniffer. And I have to type my password again. Okay. And not working. Mm. It's Yes, so as expected, we've got our TCP contents. These are all encoded. This, these are bytes that cannot be decoded to string, but let's type something that could be decoded to a string. Uh, Example.com. So there should be some decoded string here. I uh, don't see it. Yeah, all sorts of. Yeah, we won't see it decoded because it's gzip. So yeah, there's that. Let's see if we can uh, see more stuff here. So here I run again on example.com and I managed to capture some uh, ASCII text decoded some bytes decoded into string. So yeah, enter uh, example HTTP uh, example.com and there you have the response from the server HTTP 1.1 .1, 200 OK. It was encoded in JZIP so we won't be able to see the raw text from the HTML file. And we have the date, we have all sorts of data here, let's modify. And here probably is the encoded uh, website HTML data. Uh, yeah, the content length. And here are the HTTP, the typical HTTP headers for a server. So yeah, that's basically it. That's basically how you would uh, code a packet sniffer on in Go. I hope you like this tutorial. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Uh, see you next time and Happy New Year!